This forum was organized by the League of Women Voters of the Kearsage Sunapee area, according to the League of Women Voter protocols. The League is a nonpartisan political organization. The League does not support or oppose individual candidates or political parties. We do, however, work to educate the voting public and to increase the number of people who vote. Our program tonight is very much in the spirit of that voter education. And we sincerely thank the candidates who are willing to run for office and serve the town of Newbury. Um, the other thing I wanna say at the beginning is if you know people who want to see this and they missed it, it will be on YCN cable TV. And I'll say this at the beginning and at the end. Um, Newbury's Forum will be aired March 2nd tomorrow at noon and 6 p.m. Both New London and Newbury will be aired on Saturday. Um, Saturday starts at noon, but Newbury will go second. So it will really start at 1.30 because Newbury's Forum went, an, I'm sorry, New London's Forum went an hour and a half. Um, it will also be rebroadcast at five on Saturday. So that would be 6.30 for Newbury. Um, again, we wanna thank the candidates for coming to this forum to share their views. And we will begin with an opening statement by each candidate. Um, as we move through the evening, different candidates will speak first. So we have a kind of rotation. Joanne, you'll start with your opening statement. Thank you. I'm Joanne Dionne Lord. My husband is Jim Lord, also known as JJ's Miscellaneous Home Services. Newberry has been and always will be our family home. My husband's family has been in Newberry since the mid 1800s. In 1941, Jim relocated his family down, well, Jim's family relocated down into the village of South Newberry. I moved in with Jim in 1997. I'm running for selectman because I believe in transparency. I believe in our lifestyle and our people. My thought is that a select person should not have a personal agenda. We need to sit on the board, follow the laws and regulations, but we also need to listen to all of our townspeople. And when we make a decision, we should be able to explain why we voted the way we did. So transparency would be very important in my campaign. We need to reclaim our towns, our homes, and I am our community. I'm proud of my work on the planning board. We were all new members learning our way, but we made our board transparent. We attended other board meetings so that we had a voice. And I believe that the select board needs to be more transparent in their meetings. I wanna put an end to wasteful, wasteful spending and put a cap on how much the town gets to spend without the citizen's approval. The town has worked very hard to upgrade its municipalities and we still have a few more to go. I think before we grow our town, we need to reclaim the town, fix the issues in our municipalities prior to more people moving from out of town into our town and changing it. Outsiders have come here for years because they love the country. They love the small town feel in Newberry for their vacations. Currently with COVID, people are moving here and trying to make us more of what they left behind. Help me to help our town to maintain a family community we were, where we look forward to helping one another and to being a family unit united. The state of New Hampshire has asked all towns to do a study to see if workforce or affordable housing could be a possibility in the future. They're not asking us to build this kind of housing at this time. So please keep that in mind as we move forward. Let's fix our municipalities and get our town back to the way it used to be. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Joanne. Polly Lowe. Hi, I'm Polly Lowe and uh, we moved from Panama City Beach, Florida, if you can believe, uh, in 2003. So I've been here for 19 years. We built a home on Winding Book, Brook Road, close to our daughter, who has now just moved to Utah for better skiing, but won't hold that against her. Uh, about six years ago, I'm retired. I was a financial advisor for a large company in, in Florida. So I'm retired, my husband's retired. I have no other obligations at this point. And about five, six years ago, when the fire station was up for consideration and year after year, committee after committee met, 
I was never on the committees, but I went to a lot of their meetings. Uh, now that the fire station is done and we have a safe, working, functional environment for the firemen and a very aesthetic, pleasing building for the town of Newberry, uh, our next job is uh, the police renovation committee. Uh, so I was asked to be on that committee and I said yes. And I also volunteered to be chair. And volunteer is not a good word in my vocabulary, but here I am. Uh, in November, uh, we brought forth many plans, changed things, uh, picked up the critical needs for the police. And we are now at the point of coming to the town with our recommendation and asking for their vote. If I get on the select board, it would be my honor to continue working to provide a safe environment for our police, for our town. And uh, it just, that is my priority at this point. There are other issues I'm sure that will come up tonight that we'll speak about. I too believe in transparency. I go to many, many select board meetings in the last several years. And it's only on occasion that I can't be there. So I kind of know what it's all about and I really like to uh, participate. Thank you very much. Thank you. And Kristen Schultz. Hi, thank you. Thank you for having us and hosting this event. My name is Kristen Schultz and my aim as a select board member is to understand the interests and the concerns of the community and to make sure that we are working in order to address those concerns and address those questions and to make board decisions that are reflective of the present day community and their needs. Another goal of mine is to abide by and serve as a resource in substantive and procedural law, which is one huge af as avenue of the select board role. The other is to manage the affairs of the select board in a prudent and discretionary way. Some of these guiding principles that are important to me is that all rules and regulations need to be enforced consistently without exception. If there are rules and regulations that the community would like to see changed, added, or removed, there is a procedure for that. And I believe that the select board should serve as a resource for the community in that role. The select board should not be thinking of personal agendas, which is very obvious and um, my fellow candidates agree with that. And I think that the decisions made by a select board need to be founded in rule. And that in order for this to become a very transparent board, we have to make sure that we are abiding by the substantive and procedural regulations that are in place. And if there are um, regulations in place without penalty or remedy, that needs to be addressed. Some of my qualifications include, I have a master's degree in law with a specialization in labor and employment law. I am a career high school English teacher, so I have had continuing education beyond my master level degree. I have served on numerous boards, search committees, and blue ribbon committees. Um, I was a vice president for my local union and Massachusetts state union, where I created, supported, and changed education, labor, and public health law. Um, and I look forward to answering more questions. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Polly, with the first question, I'll start with you and I'll read the question to each of the candidates. What town boards or committees have you served on and what did you learn from that experience that will help you in the select board role? So the last part is the most important. What did you learn from that experience that will help you in the select board role? Um, we start with Polly. Okay. Uh, the only committee I have served on or board has been the Police Renovation Committee, uh, which is ongoing right now. Like I said prior, I have been over the last two years, at least, been to almost every select board meeting 
listened, participated. Uh, I think I understand how they operate. There are some things I agree with, some things I don't, but I think it's the consensus of the community um, and what they want is how the select board should take this town forward. We have a beautiful community. I appreciate our senior citizens that are here. I know there are a lot of newcomers coming into town and uh, I hope they respect what we have and can live with uh, ongoing with progress, but not impose their th their thinking onto this town. Thank you. Thank you, Kristen. The question again, what town boards or committees have you served on and what did you learn from that experience that will help you in a select board member role? Thank you. So I am a member of the housing committee and I am a Kearsage Regional School Board member. So I serve on two boards. Um, I've learned very different things from each of these boards. The housing committee, I learned a lot about the housing crisis in New Hampshire in general, but um, the shortage of housing in New Hampshire, specifically affordable housing for younger families and younger workforce folk to come in and be part of the community. Um, I also learned through these meetings that there are many people who shy away from the idea of making workforce housing part of our community because of preconceived notions. And it's important to know that this is a state requirement that all communities create opportunity for workforce housing. Secondly, as a school board member, um, I've worked with school boards for many years, but particularly from this school board working through COVID, I learned that um, sometimes the decisions that we make don't please everybody, but if you're principled and you have guiding you know, ideas and reasoning for your decisions, you can make those decisions with integrity and with confidence that you are utilizing outside resources. For example, New Hampshire Department of Health and Human Services for COVID protocol. So um, I've learned that the community is very passionate about their, their towns and their students. And it is very admirable to be learning from the community, um, particularly from their passions. Thank you very much. And Joanne, the question again is what town boards or committees have you served on? And what did you learn from that experience that will help you in a select board member role? Thank you. I have gone to many select board meetings prior to COVID, and I have learned quite a bit from that. I also have been on the planning board, and one of the biggest things I took out of the planning board is you could have nothing to do with politics, and you could have nothing to do with the law, and still be able to make a difference in your town and community by listening to people and by actually following the rules and regulations. I learned that there's a lot of things that are not clearly defined that needs to be defined. And as part of the select board, I think again, transparency is very important. I was on the Workforce Affordable Housing Committee uh, for a short time, but it kept getting confused between workforce and affordable housing. And at this point, that, like I stated earlier, the state is not mandating we do this. They're just asking us to check to see if it's feasible in the future. So one of the things I really learned is how you present things is very important to make sure it's clear and identified properly so nobody gets any misconceptions. And again, as the other people have said, people to, uh, have different opinions and everybody's entitled to their own opinions. But I learned from the planning board that you really have to follow the rules and the regulations and listen to the people of the town. Thank you. We'll move on to the next question and Kristen, you'll be first. Mm -hmm. Please state three things that you will seek to accomplish as a member of the select board. Please explain why you believe them to be important and what actions you intend to take to see that they are implemented. 
Thank you. So one thing that is important is to make sure that each department has a capital improvement plan as part of its annual budget and that each capital improvement plan is sufficient enough to meet the needs of the departments and to take into consideration industry standards. Um, the second thing that is important is taking a look at the budget and understanding each line item and working within the budget to examine and analyze what is being spent where and what does that mean as a measure with everything. So for instance, if we're looking at um, you know, spending money on a particular building, um, what does it mean to do it now versus later? And then what, what are the interest rates gonna be? So really examining all the money that's in there, where it's going, when it's going, what we need to borrow and really examine the budget. And then transparency is extremely important. And as someone who has served on numerous boards, I believe that in order for people to have faith in the decisions you make, they need to be made openly with discussion, not unilaterally um, behind closed doors. And so transparency is something that is extremely important to me. And it is important to me knowing how important it is to the community. So I plan to work on transparency in terms of having real good discussions about agenda items and explaining our, my school of thought when I make decisions, following some very simple principles in decision-making, such as the, the prudent person decision, where you're really using you know, your discretion and dealing with other people's money as if it were your own. So these are the, the things that I do plan on applying to my role as a select board. Thank you. Um, Joanne, same question. Please state three things that you will seek to accomplish as a member of the select board. Please explain why you believe them to be important and what actions you intend to take to see that they are implemented. Well, as we all have been saying, and we'll probably all say it all night, transparency is the most important. One of the things that I feel is important is when we have a select board meeting that not every session has to end in a closed session. Closed sessions basically should be for employee discipline or confidential information. And so when this town does have to go into a closed session, it needs to be transparent as to why. Saying it's either public uh, employment issues that have to be addressed or confidentiality so that people don't think things are being done behind their back. That has been something that's been going on with the town for a long time and the townspeople have spoken. I have been listening to them and I have promised that that would be one thing I would really work hard at is making sure there's more transparency. The other thing I would work hard at is on our budget, we always have for repairs, but evidently things are not being repaired because if they were, our buildings will need all this work constantly. So for me, it's very important that we watch the budget, make sure there's enough to maintain these buildings. And lastly, it would be to listen to the people in town and get their opinions and try to get as many people to these town meetings as possible. Everybody has something to say. And the one of the reasons I'm running for select person is I would be a hypocrite if I have something to complain about and I don't try to fix it. So I would suggest to anybody watching I am putting my voice out there and I'm telling you, if you want to change, come to the town meetings. And that's going to be a platform I'm going to hold on to. And I'm going to make more people aware of these town meetings and get them to start going so that everybody has a voice in the town, not just calling the selectmen, which people call me all the time and I try to help them. But a phone call is not enough. You need to be there so the rest of the board members get to hear what you have to say. So it's not third party. So transparency, getting people to the meetings and making sure we have enough money put aside to repair the buildings as they need it. Because the library shouldn't be in the condition it's in, the police department shouldn't be in the condition it's in. So for me, it's really making sure we have the funds to take care of what the municipalities need and what the people need. Thank you. Okay, and Polly, same question. 
Please state three things that you will seek to accomplish as a member of the select board. Please explain why you believe them to be important and what actions you intend to take to see that they are implemented. Well, first of all, of all the um, select board, as I know it, um, has never cut anybody off from a public input. And I would like to see that continued. Um, I think there does need to be more people come to select board meetings. And so one of my objectives would be to increase communications with people who don't have access to the internet, to computers, and mainly it's the older people. We need to send out flyers. We need to do something to get a hold of these people. That's number one. Uh, number two, I would like to be instrumental in the transition of the town administrator and uh, on the search committee to select someone to replace uh, Dennis. And that is a critical point of anybody uh, new to the select um, board is to be able to find somebody to replace him and have a transition period. Um, number three is, um, well, after the police uh, renovation, there were no capital funds set aside to do any uh, capital improvements to the police department. So we had to start new with a new committee and, and new guidelines. Uh, so uh, the other thing, uh, the transfer station is deplorable. I would rather call it a dump. And um, there and there is a warrant article out there as number 11 for 35,000. I don't think that sh should even pass because it's, uh, it's just throwing money away until we find out what really needs to be done and, um, and get involved in that. So it's the police station, uh, the transfer of power with the um, town administrator, communications, and number four is the transfer station. Thank you. Thank you. Um, question three, and by the way, I didn't say this, but these questions were all sent in from Newbury residents. So you are getting a sense of what's on people's minds. Um, all right, I have to find number three. Have you attended any of the public information sessions on the library expansion, the police department renovation, or the Kearsage School District STEAM building project? If not, how have you informed yourself about these initiatives? Uh, Joanne, you start. I have not, and there's no excuse for not going. Um, I've had personal issues going on here, which we've taken care of, but I have been keeping up to date on the police department. I talked to Officer Wheeler, or Chief Wheeler. I keep thinking of Officer, he's been there so long, but Chief Wheeler to keep an update on the idea. And I actually did speak with Polly about her plans and gave her some suggestions. In regards to the library, I do keep an eye on that. We did do the library many years ago. I believe it's oh, a little over 15 years ago when Bev Wolf was involved. And she did state that there would not be uh, um, any renovations for at least 15 to 20 years. I wish they had maintained and fixed the roof and stuff in the budget. But again, I checked with other officials and other people in the town. And I also read to find out what is going on and where we need to be. Um, I don't have a personal agenda, so I'm not gonna tell you I'm pushing for the library or I'm pushing for the police department because as a select board, you should not have a personal agenda. You need to listen to your townspeople. By listening to the townspeople is how I get my information and by attending meetings when I'm able to is the other way I get my information. But this is the one year that I did not stay on top of all the, um, requests to build or expand. Thank you. Um, Polly, you're next, same question. Have you attended any of the public information sessions on the library expansion, the police department renovation, or the Kearsage School District STEAM building project? If not, how have you informed yourself about these initiatives? Well, the uh, let's start with the, uh, the school situation. Uh, Gentleman, don't know his name, unfortunately, uh, came in and spoke uh, to the select board. Or, um, and I got a lot of information from that. And I hear from other people in town what they've heard. Um, as far as the um, police, 
uh, renovation. Uh, that is a personal agenda, but it's also the agenda of every selectman currently on the board. So I don't consider it personal. I consider it a, um, an asset to something that we need to do for the town and for the safety of the town and our policemen. And um, the other one was the library. They also have been to several select board meetings. They were at the bond hearing, which I was at. I've conducted my own public hearing, um, or public meetings uh, twice with the police and uh, did not, was not able to make the one with the library, but I'm well aware um, we are kind of in uh, the same step, if you will, with the library and uh, what we want to accomplish this year. Thank, Thank you. you. And Kristen, have you attended any of the public information sessions on the library expansion, the police department renovation, or the Kearsage School District STEAM building project? If not, how have you informed yourself about these initiatives? Thank you. I'll start with the easiest one first. I'm on the school board. So yes, I have attended STEAM um, project meetings. I've also voted on the warrant article. Um, in terms of the library and the police department, I have attended public um, information sessions, but I also have spoken directly um, privately with, with police, the police force, people on the police force. I have spoken with people associated with and working at the library. Um, I spoke with Dennis about the library and the cost um, of each of these projects on taxpayers. And I have actually spoken with my personal banker attorney who we were discussing the impact of the Federal Reserves, which are poised to raise the interest rates every quarter this coming year. So um, discussing and keeping apprised of the impact of securing a bond for these projects if they were to pass at a later date and not on this um, warrant article. Um, I keep myself very educated on these projects and understanding also the apprehension of the community members. It's a lot to put on the, uh, the warrant, but I do believe that each department head of these, these entities understand what they need and when they need it. So I, I believe in the need for all of this um, and I understand the need for all of this, but it also needs to be weighed against the public's comfort level in spending. Okay, thank you. Um, Polly, we'll start with you on the next question. This is an I question, but obviously it doesn't mean me. It means the person who sent in the question. I am retired on a fixed income. What specific actions do you have planned to reduce my property taxes or at a minimum keep them flat? Well, that would depend. There are a lot of retired people on fixed incomes that are living on the lake or very expensive property. And I don't know how to address that, quite frankly, if they have a uh, assessed value, um, you know, over 500,000 or whatever. Um, as far as uh, the warrants that are coming up, the two large ones, the library and the police, uh, the police warrant would mean a $21 per year increase in taxes on a 300,000 assessed value property. The library would be a $24 per year on a $300,000 assessed property. Now, if this person lives in something less than a $300,000 property, then of course they're gonna pay a lot less. But the two of them combined, hopefully if they both pass, would be $45 a year for both. Uh, needless to say, uh, it's personal choice as to whether you vote for one or both or neither. But at this point in time, interest rates will not be coming down. 
they'll only be going up. And it's uh, the town administrator has shown us what it will cost if we wait another year. So it would behoove us to take advantage of the interest rates and go forward as soon as we can. Thank okay. you. Kristen, um, I am retired on a fixed income. What specific actions do you have planned to reduce my property taxes or at a minimum keep them flat? So I think that the talking about taxes is a collaborative discussion to be had, um, you know, with other select board members and, you know, the town administrator and the tax collector. I don't know that um, people's taxes are going to get lowered, but I think keeping them flat is really important. Um, and I think that understanding that people are on a fixed income is something that that is a big factor in making budget decisions, right? So when, when I talk about the prudent man principle, it really is dealing with budgetary items as though they were your own, it was your own money and you're being very prudent and very discretionary, knowing that you need to balance the, the, the needs of the community with the fact that a lot of people are on a fixed income. I think one of the benefits of Newberry is that people on the lake do pay a, a, a about, I think over 50%, I wanna even say 60% of the tax burden in Newberry, if I am correct in my figures. And I think that is a very important element in balancing out the tax burden for our community. Um, I do think that keeping taxes flat is important as an executive decision. That's something I would work on in terms of these warrant articles that is up to the community to decide. And of course I have no say over that. Okay, thank you. Joanne, um, I am retired on a fixed income. What specific actions do you have planned to reduce my property taxes or at a minimum keep them flat? I am, as an individual person, unable to do that for you. However, I do want to go through the budget and look at the budget and stop all the wasteful spending that we've been doing. The town has a policy where they can spend as much money as they want without public knowledge or without the public having a say in it, um, such as the van that they purchased, which we saw, which was a nightmare. And I would like to get a hold and put a, try to put a cap on wasteless spending where the town, I would, of course, it would have to be a Warren article at some point, but where the town puts in where the select people or the administrator cannot go and just buy whatever they want to buy. Because when they go and they wastefully spend money, that brings our taxes up because the budgets and everything else go up. We need to look at the budget, see where we can lower some of the prices because when you look at that budget, there's a lot of money there. And every year you ask for more just to make sure you got enough to cover inflation. But I, I think we could cut down on some of the spending that we do in order to maintain the property taxes. Okay, thank you. Kristen, we'll start with you on this one. How do you prioritize Newbury's infrastructure needs? Um. I, I depend on the, the people in charge of those departments to give an honest appraisal of what the needs are and through uh, an examination of what needs to be done and understanding. The worst thing that can happen is holding off on, on fixing infrastructure to then have it become more expensive in the long run or become antiquated and have to undo the little band-aids all along. So then when you're ready to make a change or, or, or update because of industry standards or what have you, now you're undoing things that you've paid for. So it's really a very deep dive into what the needs are. If we trust our department heads 
in this town and and we do as far as i know they're going to be honest with what their needs are you know the transfer station the reason why it's a warrant article is because it was not um the, the budget was not approved to put in a capital improvement plan. And so it shouldn't have to wait until it needs to become a warrant article. Capital improvement plans should be part of every department, every spending um, budget for each department. And we should be making sure that we're keeping up with the needs of each department so that we are not throwing warrant articles to, to citizens who expect the select board to manage these affairs properly and prudently. So I would prioritize them through an analysis of hearing what the, diff what the needs were. Okay, thank you. Um, Joanne, how do you prioritize Newbury's infrastructure needs? Well, looking at the infrastructure for where we stand right now, we have done the town hall, we have done the um, highway department, we have done the fire department. That leaves our two municipalities left that really need to be fixed, which is the police department and the transfer station. But it's up to the town's people on how this gets done. So it's really important to to have the people know on a regular basis what's going on, not just at the end of the year when it's time to vote for these things. This stuff should be discussed throughout the year, every year of where the building stands, where the vehicle stand, where the employment stands. But what happens is we wait until the end of the year when it's time to vote for select person or to get warrant articles. And we say, hey, by the way, we haven't done this in 20 years and we now we're coming up with this big idea of what we have to do. The other thing is we have to stop using the same people in order to, and I'll wrap this up real quick, but the same people to give us the cost of all this infrastructure. Okay, thank you. Um, Holly, same question. How do you prioritize Newbury's infrastructure needs? Well, first I think is safety of the people in the community. Um, and uh, what, what I might say is uh, if you go to the select board meetings, almost every select board meeting, Cal brings up the fact that something is broken, he needs to replace it. And I have never seen the select board turn him down for a replacement or an extra this, an extra that. So he's on top of it right along. Um, the police are the same way with regard to their vehicles, um, <clears throat> excuse me, the computers that we just put into them to bring them up to date. Um, I don't know what price we're looking at, uh, the life of a policeman, the life of a, a fireman when it comes to having the best or at least up to code for what they have to work with. So um, I just see the building um, and uh, back, going back to the library and I brought this up at annual meeting last year. It's 22 years old, they've never fixed the roof, they've never fixed the water supply, they've never fixed anything. And now it's a $2 million project. And um, I agree that things should be maintained along the way and before they become a huge problem. Unfortunately, the transfer station is now at a huge problem because it hasn't been maintained along the way. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, now we go back to Joanne to start the next question. The most recent LSPA watershed report reported that the water quality of Lake Sunapee is deteriorating due to the presence of cyanobacteria in the water. What steps would you take as a member of the select board to initiate actions by the town to maintain and improve the water quality of Newbury Lakes? Well, you know, the water at the Newbury Lakes is very important. The water throughout all of our town and our whole world is very important. Um, we have to step up as the people and the citizens and make sure that when the boats go in the water, they don't have anything on them. We need to make sure that the wildlife and the plantation that's around the lake maintains. 
right now we're building so fast and people are not following all the codes. And we need to make sure that we go by all these places and we check on them and we have our enforcement look at who's building and what's not being done properly in order to maintain the lake quality. Because that's really important with all the building and you're not able to look at it. There are, we have the one inspector and he tries to check as much as he can, but he can't be at every job site. But we do need to make sure if we see something that's not being done right, that we report it in order to get and keep our water in a safe, a safe place. And it's not just our lake, it's all the lakes in New Hampshire. Okay, thank you. Um, Polly? Uh, the most recent LSPA watershed report reported that the water quality of Lake Sunapee is deteriorating due to the presence of cyanobacteria in the water. What steps would you take as a member of the select board to initiate actions by the town to maintain and improve the water quality of lakes, Newbury Lakes? Well, from what I understand from the select board meetings and listening to um, the, the watershed uh, problems. Uh, again, it's um, enforcing the codes on new builds on the watershed area. I don't think it has so much to do with uh, boats that are going into that. That's an entirely different um, animal. But um, the watershed, uh, it, it's just up to code enforcement as far as I can see. And he's trying very hard to go out and look at these sites. But again, people need to report when they see something, say something. And um, so at that point, that's, that's the best I can figure out to do. Okay, thank you. And Kristen, the most recent LSPA watershed report reported that the water quality of Lake Sunapee is deteriorating due to the presence of cyanobacteria in the water. What steps would you take as a member of the select board to initiate actions by the town to maintain and improve the water quality of Newbury Lakes? Thank you. Um, first, I would like to see a committee formed um, to, to address this issue. It's a huge issue and the lake is vital to Newbury for many reasons. Um, so I think that we need to have a committee and in talking to the public and knowing how interested and passionate people are about this, there have been many discussions about even taking the, the towns along the, the lake and forming a joint committee. So I think those are all very important avenues to explore. I think code enforcement is a huge issue and while I hear my, my friends on Zoom talking about see something, say something. I think it's a very difficult position to put neighbors against each other. And I think that we need to find a way to enforce codes through a town level and to make sure that they're being enforced regularly, consistently, um, without exception. and examining what changes might need to be made in code enforcement to make sure that that is a priority and is being done. Okay, thank you. Uh, next question, <coughs> excuse me, Polly. There is a demand for more housing. How would you deal with the housing shortage in Newbury? Well, I started out being on the, the building, the housing committee, and um, uh, I too didn't, wasn't sure of where this was leading. And uh, it was all Zoom at the time. And uh, I like to see people face to face. I know COVID stepped into it, but um, there is so little land available in Newberry to build on. And if they want to do cluster housing, and then I read they want to do housing and commercial combined. And I think that is not the way to go in Newbury. Um, I think maybe duplexes or something like that might work. 
but uh, another situation like the senior housing that uh, HUD put in, uh, I don't see that happening here. I don't think the land is available for it. And um, it would take a, a lot of changes to our community to see that happen. Thank you. All right, Kristen, there is a demand for more housing in Newbury. How would you deal with the housing shortage? Um, I think that, so the demand for workforce housing is at the state level. Um, this, the state has identified the need to have housing opportunities for people, for working families where they don't pay more than I believe it's a third of their income for housing. I think that as a select board member, you're there to enforce the rules and regulations that are on the books and that if there is workforce housing to come into town and it's not violating any of the zoning ordinances, then you know it, you can't enforce something that's not there to be enforced. So to think about what the houses look like and cluster housing, if these things pass then and mixed use, then, then they're allowed. And even with a mixed use or commercial place, if we don't get to decide what goes in there is what I'm saying. We're, we're very bound by rules and regulations. Um, I think another part of the housing shortage is the fact that we are a vacation community and short-term rentals has really um, bought up a lot of the housing and housing that could be for long-term rentals is now short-term rentals and there are no regulations on short-term rentals. And I'm not suggesting that the town create regulations for it, but it is a conversation to understand all of the components that have led to this um, housing shortage. And the fact that the demand to build new housing is because there are no more affordable houses per se in Newberry. So it, it's really not up to the select board to decide what goes in and out of the town in terms of ordinances and what buildings look like. Okay, um, and Joanne, the, there is strong demand for more housing in Newbury. How would you deal with the housing shortage? Okay, so first of all, there's more demand everywhere. It's not just Newbury. Second of all, we have the committee that was looking into it as the state has asked them to do. Newberry has a lot of wetlands and it's not very many places, if any, that we could have it for one. Second of all, workforce housing has to be determined. Are we talking workforce housing or affordable housing? Because that com the committee kept going back and forth. One minute it was workforce, next minute it was affordable housing. Um, if you look around, there's a lot of locations and there's people that are on these boards that they want to push workforce housing or affordable housing, but some of, some of these people have other places on their location that they don't want to rent to people. So I think basically right now, there is no major time that we have to do workforce housing by the state, but I don't believe there's any place in Newberry that currently can hold um, workforce housing or affordable housing. So I think if you have, if people are interested in doing that, like what we did, we put a little apartment off of our barn and I brought my father and his girlfriend here so that they could live someplace safe and I could watch them and be able for them to live healthy and a decent life. And I think if more people look at that as an option, then we could bring a little bit of housing into the area when we need to. Right now we are above the state level for what they require for an ADU. They, I believe they require 800 square feet and we have 1200 or it was a thousand, I think we want 1200. So um, there's really at this point, there's no place in Newbury that can do workforce or affordable housing. Okay, thank you. Um, given the time we're at 7.51 and we're supposed to end at eight, we're going to move to the closing statements. Again, you have two minutes. We will not stop you at two minutes if you need to finish, but be reasonable. 
Um, let's start this time with Kristen. I am very excited to um, serve the community of Newberry. My husband and I are very community driven, very community focused. My husband is actually, is he still at a fire, Joanne? <laughs> no, I think they left. Okay, good. Um, <laughs> and I feel like my experience is um, uniquely qualifies me for this position. I have served on executive boards. I have served on search committees. I have a formal education and years of experience in policy making in um, substantive and procedural law. And I believe that my desire and ability to hear what the community needs and to examine all aspects of a decision before making a decision make me a, a very viable candidate for this role. Um, I also think it's important to understand that executive decisions will be made and that those executive decisions need to be bound by, by schools of thought, by um, canons of construction when you're dealing with analyzing all of the information that goes into decision-making, research and legal, uh, legal research and writing is one of my expertise and I don't take any decision lightly. And um, as I mentioned before, even talking about the Warren articles, I, I reached out to my banker to talk about what the Federal Reserves were poised to do. So I'm very thorough. I have a lot of integrity. I'm very honest and I'm very, um, approachable. So that's why I, I think all of that combined would be a good, a good potpourri of qualities for this position. Thank you. Thank you, Joanne. In closing, I want to take, thank my worthy opponents, the League of, League of New Hampshire voters and all of the town. I stand in front of you with the, no personal agenda other than to be the voice of the people in the town and to strive to make our town meetings no more, I want them more um, transparent along with all the other boards, not just the select board. When I believe in something strong enough, I'll fight long and hard for it. This has been proven over and over again. I fought long and hard for the town to make Brad Wheeler our police chief. He was one of our police officers for many years, but with full commitment by myself and others in town, we have an amazing chief. Our fire department and our police department work hand in hand because we are a community and we respect each other. So I wanna work hand in hand with the citizens of Newberry to bring back and update our values and to bring transparency back to our boards and make sure that Newberry stays the nice community that it's always been. I've been here for a long time. I know a lot of people. I've watched people come and go. I've seen um, neighbors pass away and we've helped them when they've done that. And I just feel that Newberry's been my home for so long and my husband's home for so long. We don't wanna see it change. We don't want it. We know it's gonna grow, but we wanna keep the family value that Newberry has always had and is respected for. So thank you all. Thank you, and Polly? Uh, yes, uh, thank you for having this forum. Uh, I've learned a lot. And um, Newberry is a very beautiful place. I've been here 19 years. I've seen changes, and for the most part, they've been good. Uh, I'd like to see that same direction continue. Um, we are going to have newcomers to the area, and it's because of our friendliness, our uh, infrastructure, safety, and all of those values that people are moving here, trying to get out of the cities. But I don't want that to change Newberry. Uh, if you remember anything, it's uh, Polly for the police and Polly for the beautiful people of Newberry. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I would like to thank you for all being willing to participate in this presentation. It helps the town to understand more who you are and what you stand for. Um, I would like to thank all of the people who are attending.